Welcome to the Unicon Open Source Support Briefing for Open Aquello for Q1 of 2019. For our agenda today, we will be covering community news, uh, talking about some sustaining engineering efforts that Unicon has done, also looking at a, some technical updates. We'll be looking ahead to the next release of Open Aquello, so 2019.1. We'll talk about some upcoming events, and then we'll leave some time for um, just kind of an open Q&A session. Um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Chris Beach. I am the Unicon Open Aquila Tech Lead, and more generally, I'm a software developer at Unicon focused on open source software. First thing we wanted to talk about in the community news is um, the uh, some high-level updates from the community groups. So the Open Aquella community um, developers, we meet monthly, uh, right at the beginning of the month, um, and it's, it's open to anyone that would like to, that has an interest in, in developing Open Aquella. Um, so if you want to look at the agenda, or if you want to join and add something to the agenda, and also look at our minutes, um, it's out there on the wiki, which is, the link is there, and we'll be posting these slides so you can capture all the links um, after the presentation. Uh, we have discussed uh, changing the, um, how, we, how we implement the, um, the release cycle and how we work with uh, code branches, feature branches, um, and changed it a bit. The master branch is now stable, and the develop branch is now all the bleeding edge work goes into that. If you are um, if you are developing Aquila, that may that will be of interest to you. If you are not, um, the you know, that doesn't really change how the releases look. Um, it just helps to clean things up. Uh, we've also been working on getting towards a more consistent code styling. Uh, we've installed we as the community have installed pre-commit hooks um, to make sure that our Java Scala and our front end code is, is more consistent. Um, it's, it helps, especially when there are, you know, there's a number of developers all committing uh, or um, creating pull requests with code changes and just to make it so, you know, there's, there's less um, superfluous changes in there. Um, we wanted to implement that. We've also been discussing um, planning the, um, the Aquila project, right, in terms of what a GitHub project is, all of the repositories, to move to the Aperio project space. Uh, this is to um, be more in line with the trademark agreement with um, Pearson. Pearson wanted the Aquila project when it's open source to be named Open Aquila. So all references of Aquila uh, we're working to change to open Aquila. Um, you know, there was a big push right up front when it was being open source, and you're, you know, this effort is is a continuation of that. Um, the end goal will be to um, to no longer use the Aquila project in GitHub, and we will only use repositories under the Aperio GitHub project. Um, that that really doesn't. It's it's a matter of interest, but it won't change um, the abilities of what we have to do. Right. So if you um, if you're wanting to aspire to be a committer of a repository, possibly the, the primary code base, that's still possible. Um, it's just this will, um, this will be more in line with uh, the agreement that Aperio um, worked out with Pearson. And we've also been discussing test harnesses, right? How can we do more automated testing um, in a better way uh, so we can release um, faster, make sure that our changes that we're putting in uh, don't break anything um, and hopefully create a better open source platform for folks to use. Um, so that takes right now in the form of unit tests, these integration tests, which you'll see is, you know, they're, they're called auto tests out in the repo. And then we're looking at front end harnesses um, and discussing the, the pros and cons of them to, you know, so how can we best use or test this new API that we're, that's being developed. And then just kind of a call out to the community. If anyone um, on this call or, or listening to the presentation is interested in developing Open Aquila, right, um, we welcome you to join. Uh, there are folks on there that have been um, creating Open Aquila, building Open Aquila pretty much since day one, right? 
Um, and there's also folks that have been on there for, that's been working with Open Apollo for less than a year. So the goal there is just, you know, bringing anything you can to the table to make the application better as well. For the other groups um, in the community uh, that has been meeting, the Open Aquila Advisory Board met. Um, we discussed and confirmed forming the Open Aquila Security Group, which I'll talk about in just a minute. We talked about the roadmap. Uh, we've talked about enabling OER availability. Um, with OER, right, that's one of the, the, um, one of the useful abilities of Open Aquila is that it can expose OER resources and also pull OER um, into your repository. And so uh, making sure that, you know, where is OER available? What do folks like about, um, you know, the OER repositories they're interested in? Um, that's, that's of interest to the advisory board. So if you do have repositories that you harvest from or that you pull from, um, or that you, you make available to the community. If you wanted to um, let the community know about that, I think it would be useful to create kind of a, a go-to page. Uh, these are the OER repositories that are known to work with Open Aquello or that are exposed through Open Aquello. And then we've talked about upcoming events, just making sure that we're all aligned on, um, on the presentations and whatnot that will be coming up this year. For the Open Aquila Security Group, um, this is a new group. It's been it was formed in, in this in Q1 of this year. Um, its purpose is uh, to to field the security issues that come in from the community um, and from the developers, and then to guide the resolution. It doesn't mean that we will necessarily solve every single one. Not that it's not an issue, um, but you know, it's everything is based on available resources. Um, but we want to create a um, a vehicle that's, um, that Open Aquila can, um, can address any security concerns. Um, and so then the, um, the investigations that we do, the resolutions that we do, um, will then bubble up to the advisory board out to the wider community. Um, and so we can have proper messaging and making sure that, you know, if there's a really serious security concern, we can help handle that, resolve it, and let the community know in a proper manner. Um, various open source projects do it in different ways. Um, so we are currently looking at how um, we feel as a community it would be appropriate to do it right now. Um, and there's, um, we'll have further messaging out on the community board once we, um, we define kind of how we want to handle incidents, right? And that will be, um, that'll be open for the community to, to review and look at as also um, an alias to, if you have a security issue, uh, you don't have to be a, you know, a, an open source support subscriber to Unicon necessarily or to Edelax or to, you know, Next Education Services. Anyone can go ahead and raise a security concern um, and, and the security group will, um, will take a look at it. All right, moving into sustaining engineering. What did we do last, um, last quarter? It was taken up a lot by Blackboard. Um, the Blackboard integration, and I'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the tech update. Um, but we've released the um, version 2.0.3 uh, of the building block and the web service, um, which now allows the building block and the web service was broken for quite some time. Um, and it is now fixed again, or it's now fixed, and you can go ahead and um, install it, update it on your Blackboard systems and you shouldn't have to do any kind of migrations or anything, it should just work as is. We also did quite a bit of work um, on getting a proof of concept going for the kind of the future of the Open Aquila Blackboard integration, um, which is known as the LTI REST integration. And we'll talk more about that in the tech update. We also worked to enhance um, this application, as a supporting application called the Open Aquila Toolbox. We moved it into its own GitHub repository so it can, um, so we can track releases and build cycles better. Um, it's really a, it's meant as a, um, uh, as a supporting um, application that you can install on your server and then you can access from, from a, like say an expert save script, right? So there's scripts out there that use the file lister abilities 
um, and it's a way to um, to enhance the scripting abilities without having to go um, into the open Aquila code base and go through a new release of the application. Um, I, it's it's kind of clear to me that as as more toolbox enhancements are added or used as community interest is generated, that these will be then moved in, some of these abilities will be moved into the core code base, um, such as the, the emailer function that was put in this, um, this last quarter. And it's, it's just very simple, right? It allows any time that you um, want to send an email from a script, right, you can now do that. You install the Open Acola toolbox, you go ahead and just invoke it. Um, and you don't have to worry about server specific settings. Uh, you, can, you can just go ahead and use this application. Uh, so kind of a call to the community, if you have something that you feel would be interesting to put into this toolbox, um, it's, a, it's a smaller ramp up to being able to go ahead and develop on it because it's a smaller code base. Um, so please feel free to, to take a look and, um, and to submit a pull request. So going into the, the tech update, we had some server integration notes that, we, uh, that we've been working on. ImageMagic 7.0.8, it's one of the later releases of ImageMagic, no longer works with Open Aquila. Um, it's the identify and convert commands that Open Aquila used have become legacy commands. If you install ImageMagic 7.0.7, you'll notice on the install um, wizard that it asks you, do you want to install identify and convert as legacy commands? So if you select, yes, I do, you can go ahead and use 7.0.7 just fine. Uh, we haven't experienced issues with that. 7.0.8 does not give that option. And so in order to use um, the .8 release, there will have to be code changes made in Aquila. We haven't heard anyone have a need yet to upgrade to the .o release. If you do, please reach out to your service provider, open a GitHub issue ticket so the community can be aware of that. We, defi uh, we discovered a bug, well, we didn't discover it, but we, we recognize that a bug in GhostScript 9.26, which is, um, I believe it's the latest version, at least it was when we discovered this, uh, it, it has a bug that it doesn't turn PDFs into thumbnails on Windows systems the way that Aquila invokes um, Image Magic, which invokes GhostScript. If you back level to GhostScript 9.25, then it works just fine. Uh, so we'll be tracking at what point can we upgrade to the latest GhostScript that, and it, you know, it won't break PDF thumbnailing on Windows. And we also uh, wanted to note that if you look at the documentation right now, it's Zookeeper 3, 4, I think 6 or 7 is supported with Open Aquila, um, but we are running 3, 4, 10 with success in our AWS hosted environments. Um, and, it, and so that just allows you to upgrade, you know, include more bug fixes. Um, one of the things for folks that, are, um, that run on Windows is that Zookeeper used to be uh, used to recommend that they, you don't run Zookeeper on Windows. It was a, more for a development environment. Now with 3.4.10, the documentation Zookeeper states that you can indeed run Zookeeper on Windows, and that's you know, deemed a production environment in their mind based on their testing. So let's, let's take a, a little deeper look at the Blackboard integration. We've talked about this, I think, on the last two briefings. Uh, and we've really started to um, understand where it needs to go and, and what, are, what, are, what are the kind of the parameters we need to work within. So the building block and the web service is fixed for now. Um, it, is, it still uses some deprecated um, code APIs. We've been talking with Blackboard and they are reasonably confident that that should not change this year. Um, the APIs that we show them that is being used, but they, um, they couldn't guarantee it. So if something does break, um, you know, we'll need to take that as it comes, but, we, but we're hopeful that um, we'll be able to stay with it, um, the building block and web service working as is um, until, until the, the new integration is available. 
So this allows you to do pull to LMS, right? You're in your Blackboard LMS and you're able to open a selection session into Open Aquella and, and pull out a piece of content to link to. And it also gives you the push to LMS ability. So you're in Open Aquella and you say, I want to um, you know, connect to this Blackboard instance and I want to push this piece of content to a various number of courses. And you're, you know, you're able to do that again. Uh, it works uh, seamlessly with past uh, integrations and you know the older versions of the black the building block and web service so there's no like migration needed you just need to install it on your on your blackboard instance to work there is uh, you know we we've, we've done our test you know our, our kind of our functional testing when we released it into the repository and now several adopters or as few adopters are are running tests in their environment so like any open source software, make sure that you're testing before you immediately drop into production. But we're um, we're gaining confidence that these these fixes are are going to be able to go forward into production. the The building block and web service it's it's an older style of integration with Blackboard, um, and really it it has an end of life. So yeah, Q two of twenty twenty. Blackboard is deprecating the SOAP web services that this integration relies on. And so everyone that uses Blackboard integration with Open Aquila that has to upgrade to that latest version when that time comes really needs to be moved over to the LTI REST integration. Um, in order to, um, to facilitate that, uh, we're, um, we've, we've already started to commit some basic um, Blackboard integration features into the develop branch for 2019.1. So if you want to, you know, take a look at the bleeding edge and, and see how it looks, it's available. Uh, we're building out the issue tracker to say, you know, what um, what features can get into dot one versus what features are going to be cited for dot two. They're going to be more advanced features like three-legged authentication and those kind of things. Um, and we're, we're, we're aiming that if you upgrade to 2019.2, then you should be able to turn off your building block web service integration, turn on the LTI REST integration, run a migration on your existing content, uh, and then and be able to keep work going forward. Uh, that being said, there's a limited amount of resources, and so not everything in that's possible with the integration um, may, um, may be added to 2019.2. So if you use Blackboard, you're interested in, um, in kind of help shaping what is going to be available, uh, please, um, please consider putting some resources towards the effort in terms of design, developing, testing, or funds uh, to have a service provider help out with that. The other tech update that we wanted to cover is the Oracle JDK. Um, so Oracle is now uh, charging license fees uh, essentially per use for its JDK. Um, and while on this briefing we are not in any way, shape, or form providing legal advice as to what your institution should do, um, we do want folks to consider the alternative free JDKs and JREs out there, you know, Zulu, OpenJDK, those kind of things. Uh, we know of one um, it's, it's not unheard of for Open Aquila to run on free JDKs, right? It's just up until this point, the recommended JDK was the Oracle JDK, right? And so now that's starting to switch. Um, the, the JDK takes, uh, JDK and JRE affects the life cycle of Open Aquila from how the developers make code changes, right? To, you know, if there's some oddity in the Oracle JDK or say Open JDK, you know you don't want to develop on one JDK solely and then be surprised by something. So having a um, you know working in open source JDK is um, has its benefits. Um, you want to build Open Aquila on the generally on the JDK that you're going to be running Open Aquila on, so that affects it. And then of course running the JDK or running Open Aquila, uh, you need to make sure that you're um, having the correct licensing set up for the JDK that you're using. Um, and then client-side interactions with Open Aquila in terms of the admin console, file manager, and in-place file editor requires a JRE at this point, uh, specifically the, the Java um, 
web plugin. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. So what we're, what the communities um, focus on is to ensure that the Open Aquila lifecycle is not tied to the Oracle JDK. Now that doesn't mean that you can't use it. If you want to go ahead and pay for licensing fees, that's totally up to you and your, um, your institution. Um, but we don't want to require that open source software needs a license to run. Right? And we got away from that as um, Pearson was willing to open source Aquila. And we don't want to now have to say, well, you know, it only w runs well on Oracle JDK, and now you need a license for that. So essentially, Aquila still costs you to, to run. Okay. Um, some of the bigger changes that folks will see, end users will see, is in the client side Java um, part of, of this effort. Um, so we mentioned the three. Um, the three components right, that's listed there, there's one web start application and the two applets. Uh, we, we as in the community are, um, have branched the admin console into a standalone application. So it no longer requires web start, but you will still need a, a um, open source JDK. Um, it's easier to get your hands on a, uh, a non web start enabled JDK from our experience. So something like OpenJDK, um, it's, it's fairly, um, fairly available, and the admin console should be able to work if, a, if an end user installs that on their system. Again, it will work with Oracle JDK, of course, if you wanted that to. And the goal is to have that available in this next release. Um, I've listed the, the repository down there on the slide. For the file manager and the in-place file editor, uh, these, these are looking to be removed. Um, based on our, our surveys and the Q&A that we've done with, um, with adopters of, of Open Aquila, we're looking to have them be removed, most likely in 2019.2. Um, so if that gives heartburn to anyone, please reach out to the community or to your service provider and, um, and let them know that that could be an issue for you. And, and then folks can work with you to, um, you know, on, on a path forward. As we were reaching out to the adopters we, we work um, closely with through the open source support program, um, it, it was identified that it would be helpful to have a more modern, non-Java-based file manager. Uh, same idea though, right? You go into the, an items wizard and you want to be able to change the, you know the folder structure and where files are directly placed that's not a kind of a virtual folder system like the navigation ability in an, in an item but you really want to change you know I want to put these these pieces of content in this folder for this specific item right if the file manager goes away you currently cannot do that and so creating a just a completely web-based way um, to to have the functionality that the file manager did um, is of interest. So if you are kind of like the, the call out for the Blackboard feature set, if you're interested in this as well, um, please consider um, devoting some resources to that. All right, so looking ahead, uh, we've talked a bit about what's going to, you know, what's slated for this next release. Uh, June, July timeframe for 2019.1. Admin console is going to be moved out of the code base. It's going to be a standalone launcher. Um, the REST integration, the LTI REST integration for Blackboard, we're going to have the initial logic. The initial logic is already in there. Um, we're going to hopefully get um, some more features um, into the into the code base before dot one is is released. A new ability um, in Open Aquila that's coming up is called Cloud Providers. Uh, more details will be coming soon, and there's uh, we know that um, Edelax has a um, was accepted for a presentation at Open Aquila 2019, talking all about Cloud Providers. They've done um, they've really been driving the this Cloud Providers um, functionality in Open Aquila. Um, at a very high level, think of cloud providers as you know, Image Magic is is maybe a service or a server level provider. It thumbnails images and then gives it back to Aquila and Aquila, Open Aquila 
you know, goes and saves them and does something with them. Cloud providers can do that same kind of thing, um, but you don't have to install it on your server. You work with a, you know, a different, um, a different set of tools that are stored in the cloud, so are hosted in the cloud somewhere. Um, and then, you know, really the sky's the limit on what you can do to integrate your open Aquila hub of content now with all these different abilities and pull them in at various points um, in your, you know, in your open Aquila experience. Uh, more customization of the login page has been developed. Uh, the, it allows that when you get to that login page, you're going to see um, the ability to add text and images and just make it more of, a, of an immersive experience and more friendly uh, without having to do language pack and theme hacks to, to get something to show up there. Um, the community is having continued efforts on migrating features to the new UI. Um, done a little bit of work on updating dependencies. And if you want to see the, the working feature bug fix list, uh, we have, um, we've worked as we've been talking in the, in the community developer meetings to have all of the, everything that we're trying to put into a mile, into a release, be put into a GitHub milestone and try to do that sooner rather than later. So interested parties can go ahead and see, well, you know, what's coming up in the next couple of releases of Open Aquila. So that link milestone 11 is for 2019.1. There's also 2019.2 um, being filled out now. Uh, a note on updated dependencies. This is, uh, this has been an interesting um, path as we've gone through the, the life cycle of Aquila being commercial to open Aquila, to watching the community ramp up around it. Um, the open source effort did not, um, did not dictate that all the dependencies had to be um, updated, right? They just had to be used legally. And so the dependencies have the, you know, the effort was to have the dependencies have the correct licensing on it, um, but there are outdated dependencies. Um, and so as the community and as, as adopters are working towards you know, making Aquila better, right? These dependencies will be updated. Um, so if you have dependencies that, you're, um, that you really need and they can be internal dependencies or external dependencies um, that you really want updated, you can go ahead and, and now do that. It's open source software, submit a pull request. Um, could be a good way to get involved in the, in the code base, right? And, get involved as a committer. Some of the dependencies will require very little to no code changes. Others could be fairly substantial. Um, and you'll see that just updating a dependency and then trying to rebuild Open Aquila um, and, see what, um, you know, and see what the compiler is gonna tell you. All right, specifically looking ahead to the next two quarters for Unicon, uh, we are focused on this Blackboard integration. Uh, so we're using, um, the hours that we have available in our reserves to, um, to make this a reality. And like we said, we might not get the full feature set in, but we're gonna, we're gonna do what we can to, do, um, you know, to make sure that when 2019-2 comes around and as the, as the old integration is being deprecated, that adopters will be able to switch over to this integration. Uh, we're still tracking and interested in open sourcing Aquila Sync. Um, there's been soft approvals given and we're, uh, we're looking towards the legal teams as now because anytime you, you commit a code base to a perio, there has to be a legal process. It's just the way it is. Um, so that's still in process. Um, then we have the priority backlog. If you have something um, and you are an open source support subscriber or you are hosted by Unicon, um, please make your voice be heard through a Zendesk ticket. And it's, it's there, it's, it's set up so, um, so folks feel that they have a say in kind of how, uh, on what Unicon does with the sustaining engineering budget um, as we go forward. Um, but even if you're not a subscriber, feel free to jump onto the, um, to, to the issue ticket or create an issue ticket um, and get a conversation started around it, right? Um, the, know that Edelax and Unicon, we watch those, those issue tickets as well as the community does. Um, and so as conversations are going there, that's just going to show that there is, there is that much interest 
in having a feature um, put together. And then as time allows and um, based on the budget, I, you know, it's the Blackboard integration is going to take quite a bit of the time because it's, it's a fairly good sized effort. Um, but we, um, we are excited for this new UI and um, as time allows and resources, um, we would like to also help out on that. For upcoming events, uh, we are going to be moving this briefing to two times a year. So the next briefing will be October 10th. Um, we're currently looking at 9 Pacific, 12 Eastern, and it's going to be the same kind of connection details. It's going to be a web call on Zoom. Uh, we are going to have, um, there's an Aperio conference in, in the African region, Aperio Africa. It's going to be in Cape Town this year, next week, the 15th through the 17th. Um, same kind of idea. There's workshops the first day, and then there's presentations. And there's going to be a, a remote open Aquila presentation given by myself and then um, Franz Huber, who is part of Next Education Services, which is a open Aquila consulting company that works in the uh, Europe region uh, primarily. Um, so if you are interested in tuning into that presentation, it will be 9 a.m. Central on April 16th. Open Imperial 2019 is coming up. It's going to be June 2nd through the 6th. The first day is all workshops. Uh, so we, we have the, uh, the proposal approved to do an Open Aquila workshop. So we will be firing up the latest Open Aquila um, via Docker and taking a look at the different features of it, um, answering questions, and we're really working and getting folks um, hands-on experience with the application. So you can go back and, and start looking at it with your institution. As mentioned earlier, there's a cloud providers presentation. Um, Edelax is gonna be traveling. Dan McFadden, um, who, um, who leads Edelax, he's gonna actually be flying up here. Um, so that'll be nice to be able to talk with him again face-to-face. -face. Uh, we're also going to be doing a presentation on the many faces of Open Aquella, really talking about you know, Aquila is, is configurable and customizable to lots of different scenarios for institutions, higher ed and, you know, even the non-education sector. Um, and so we'll be highlighting what some of those look like. And then we have a presentation on the state of open Aquila. You know, where are we at right now? Kind of like these briefings, um, a little more in depth. We can, you know, click around in the new, um, in the new code base, and then it has an ability for, you know, more real-time Q&A. Um, and then there's, um, but I just wanted to highlight some of those presentations, uh, hopefully get you excited to be able to, to come on down to Open Apparel. And um, if we get enough uh, Open Aquila interest down there, um, we can even start looking at setting up a, a working group on Thursday or one of the evenings um, and just sit down and talk about what people's concerns or interests with Open Aquila are. Other open source communities do that, um, but we need to have somewhat of a, of a user base there in order to make it um, have a high value add. Um, and then the other event that's coming up is Educause. It'll be the middle of October and that will be um, hosted in Chicago this year. So as we get near the end of this briefing, uh, we wanted to just give a call out to get involved in the community. If you're interested in Open Aquila, if you like it, or if you don't like it and you want to change it, um, please get involved. Right? The, the most active um, methods is using the Google Groups and then creating uh, GitHub issue tickets. Uh, there's also a Twitter handle. Um, and this Community Artifacts site, uh, it's, it's open to, to the global community, right? You essentially give it to, give your, um, your ideas to the community just to help help other institutions make Open Aquila that much better and more interesting for them. So if you have a cool report that you wrote, um, you have an institution that you're really proud of how the theming worked out and you want to share that, this is a great method to do that. If you want to uh, actually commit code then uh, to a repository, kind of like OpenSync is, um, you need to work with Aperio to make sure that all the legalese is, is good and you can go ahead and commit that code to one of the repositories. Unicon, Edelex can help with that if you need guidance. Uh, community can help with that through the user groups. Um, and then you can go ahead and post 
and then the community artifacts so it's searchable and, and folks will be able to, to um, utilize it more effectively. And with that, we will open up the, um, the briefing to any questions that are out there. Grace, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I would like to know about those pieces of code that have been developed for the universities, the ones that we were checking last year. Are they uh, going to be available anytime soon? Are they, are they already available? I just don't remember the name of the feature I was looking for. Uh, hopefully you can remember it. Yeah, I believe that was Aquila Sync. So that is still going through legal. Um, I don't have a, a timeline on that. I would love to see that ready um, for the community by Open Aperio 2019, so June. Um, but that's it's really out of my hands. It's between BYUI and Aperio at this point. Uh, but once it is released, uh, we will put a note out on the on the Google group. So as long as you're subscribed to that, you'll be able to get the, the notification. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Any other questions out there? Hey, Chris. This is Matt. I guess I didn't realize that the, the there was still some legal things pending between on Equalis Sync. You know specifically what what the holdup is. Uh, no, I don't. Um, it's just, it was between, um, there's just some emails sent back and forth and I really haven't heard a status update. Um, but I, I'm going to follow up on that and um, see if we can get something moving so it can be ready by June. Okay. I'll follow up on this end too. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, I appreciate you uh, attending and, um, and the questions asked. Um, Please, please feel free to reach out on the community channels and, and get involved in, in Open Equality. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.